All right, the first thing we're gonna do here is uh, create this automobile box axle. Um, I can kind of walk you through before we even start Autodesk. Um, we're creating just the blue area. And when I look at that, here's the center line here. Um, long, then dash, long, dash. So as we look at this, I'm gonna figure out where I wanna start my sketch. And I'm gonna choose right here in this corner um, where the, the blue sketch is meeting the center line. So um, at that point, I'm just going to start a line command, and I'm just going to trace this line um, as we go uh, along the outline. We're going to use these dimensions, and we should be able to get all the way through. So um, the first thing we're going to do with our, our uh, line command is this vertical line here, and that distance is half of this diameter of 0.19. So <coughs> I'm going to sketch on this XY plane a line command and I don't have to know what half of 19 is. I'm going to just type in 0.19 over 2. Okay. Um, the next dimension was a 0.33 to the right. And yeah. now it gets a little trickier here. We've got this little notch right here. We need to know that distance. That distance is going to be, um, well, the gap is between uh, 0.25 and 0.19. Now, we, we actually have to take half of that distance because the, dis the difference between 19 and 25 includes this gap at the top and the gap at the bottom. So the difference between 19 and 25 is 6, so we take half of 0.06 and gives us the distance up right here of 0.03. So keeping my mouse on the line command, 0.03. And we should then get another this distance right here, the 0.05, is given to us. So we find where we're at, we're coming out here, 0.05. And then this little gap here, this last gap, uh, again, we're, we're looking at a difference of 25 to 29 is 0.04. But that 0.04 includes this gap here and this gap here. So we take 0.04, cut it in half, and we're actually only going to go up 0.02. Um, so we're at this top right corner. We know that we need to come all the way across here. And it looks like that's going to be uh, 88 minus these three segments here. So we need to add 25, 19, and 7. And we get we get uh, 88 minus those three numbers. You get 0.37. So I'm going to make that 0.37 here. And you can see that we're not quite back, fully back to center. But let's see, what's our next drawing? Um, okay, so we're we're here. We need to find this, the height of this peg right here, and. Um, I'm looking at it and let me see. Looks like we're we're looking at just this gap right here. It's the same gap from the right side as it is the left. Well that gap is 0.4 minus 0.3, so 0 0.1 includes this half and this half. So the height here is 0 0.05, half of the 40 minus 30. So we're gonna go straight up vertical 0 0.05. I believe the next one's 0.07, so we've got this thickness 0.07. So we go horizontal, 0.07. We come down, 0.05 again. Remember that's the same distance on both left and right sides. Now at that point, I'm going to I'm going to stop that line, and um, the reason is not, not that line. there. We go. Um, they don't give us necessarily the the drop of this angled piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and start another line um, so from our origin. I'll go over 0.07 up the half of 19 and, and basically trace my way back around until I get to this end point of the diagonal line. And then we'll connect them. So uh, 0.07 from the origin. Seven across, and then we're up half of 19, so 0 0.19 over 2. 
and then here's this measured distance 0.19 so we'll go across 0.19. Then we go up. Now we go up this distance. Again, it's 25 and 19. The difference there is 0.06, but that includes the top and bottom halves. So we'll go up 0.03. We'll extend it up 0.03. Then we go to the left. Uh, we go to the left, a grand total of 0.25. So horizontal 0.25, and so we're right here at this corner here. Um, this gap here is between 25 to 30. So 0 0.05 is top and bottom. So we have to take 0 0.05 and cut it in half. Then we've got this distance here is measured right there 0.05. So we will come back horizontally. I may have to, um, well it's, it's 0.05, but it's not letting me go exactly 90, so I'm going to hit tab and then specify 90 degrees, and then hit enter. Um, it was trying to snap to these other lines that weren't uh, horizontal, so you can always tap into the, the degrees uh, and change that if you need to. Um, so now we've got our 0.05. Now this little tiny gap, this little drop that connects the angled line, um, that's what this dimension here is saying. 0.01 is that distance of that little tiny drop. So um, you come straight down vertically. 0.01. And now what you can see is I'm at the end point here and I can drag my mouse all the way along until we get to here. Now here's here's the end point of where I stopped as I went counterclockwise around the shape. So um, I'm just going to connect those two and right click OK. And I now have myself um, the, the sketch for my revolve. So from there, um, just a simple finish sketch. Uh, we're going to use the revolve command and it's already picked up the blue area as my profile since it's the only closed loop profile. So it's asking for, you can see this is a darker mouse icon, so it's asking right now for the axis. I'm going to specify right here. Notice I didn't have to create an axis. Because this line is also part of my sketch, I can just click on that. Um, and that will make my full sketch, so I hit OK. And I've got my shape. Um, the last thing you will do is um, put the notch here on the end, if you look at the drawing. Um, the drawing, if you look at it here, it's there's a cut that goes, it's a symmetric cut, 0.2 deep, and it's 0.04 wide. Um, but you'll you'll see it's centered, so here's how, here's how I would cut this. Um, I'm going to sketch right on this end face. Um, now notice I, I can't see the circles that I wanted, so I'm going to go back to an isometric for a moment, project geometry, and I'm going to select that face, hopefully, I'll at least select these there. So now when I go back to the, the front face of this, I can actually see how big my rectangle needs to be. Now the way I'm going to do this is just one big rectangle, um, and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go left of center and outside of what I need to cut, those yellow circles. Um, I'm going to go up here and I'm, when I hit tab, notice I'm going to give it the coordinate for x. Now, because I'm left of center, I'm going to go half of that 0.04. So negative, because I'm left of center, 0.02, which is half of my width of the cut. And then the y, it doesn't matter, as long as I'm outside of my circle. Uh, I'm just going to click and create my rectangle. Now I'm going to drag the rectangle clear to the bottom. I'm going to specify uh, right now you can see that my blue text is for the width, so 0.04, and then I'm going to tab again, and, and again the 0.336 doesn't matter as long as that number shows that it's bigger than the end of my axle. Um, so uh, we'll finish our sketch, and hopefully it'll let us just cut through, we'll extrude. 
and you'll see that it's preview it's previewing so I'll go point two to specify our right distance um, it's adding material we'll just say cut material and it will then need to be direction two and so we've got our cut 0.04 wide 0.2 deep the right direction we hit okay and we got our cut so just make sure to hit save save the part as um, axle actually I think it says in here um, says save the file as axle with your initials and put that in your 55a folder and you're done with the axle